All right, welcome back, everybody. In May this year, the Burundian elections were postponed due to a failed coup attempt. Violence spread across the country, which made it unsafe to continue with the elections. Now, on the 26th of this month, there are scheduled parliamentary elections and the presidential elections on the 15th of July. So the question is, will this poll be free of violence and be successful or not? to analyze the upcoming elections in that country. We are joined in studio by Dr. Victor Chalet, the principal consultant at Chalet Stone Elections and Governance Consulting. It's good to have you. Thank you very much for being our guest here on the program. Morning, Leon. Thanks for having me. What, are you, what, are your, what is your take on the upcoming Burundi parliamentary elections? Well, you know, it's uh, one of those things that, you know, uh, you know it's never ending story. Um, but one that you know can be better summed up as a fallacy of electoralism in that uh, there seems to be a perception that uh, elections are a panacea for African problems and that has over and over proven us to be wrong. Yeah. Do, do you think that Burundi can conduct these elections without any violence? Actually, I doubt if uh, there will be, you know, free and fair elections in Burundi because they are already being held against the background of, you know, open violence uh, uh, meted out against opposition uh, parties by uh, President Gurunziza's uh, milit militia and even the security forces. So you are conducting elections in a country where the pre-election environment is simply not conducive for holding of uh, credible elections. Yeah, I mean, I, I imagine that we could learn a lot about democracy and Africa in this failed coup attempt. Um, what, have you, what have you sort of analyzed and read into all of this? You know, this coup uh, story is very interesting because talking to some of my contacts in Bujumbura, you actually find that it, there's a likelihood that it was actually a stage-managed uh, coup to sort of invite, uh, you know, sympathies for the president who is clearly uh, losing uh, confidence of the majority of the people. But uh, I think uh, what is important uh, for me is... Why are our African leaders penchant on staying on to power even when it is clear that they no longer uh, serve the interests of the people? I mean, what you have in Burundi is a question of the constitutional correctness and the political correctness of the whole situation because the constitutional court, and we want to respect the judiciary in this regard, they are saying, yes, he can contest. But politically, it is not right. People have already died in Burundi. Over uh, oh, close to 100,000 uh, people are already, you know, uh, refugees in neighboring countries. Why would a man of integrity want to stay on under such circumstances? And we see this all over the continent yeah. where leaders refuse to leave, want to uh, change constitutions so that they can, you know, extend their mandate. Yeah, you asked that question. I'm going to ask you the same question. Why? What, what is the, is it, is it the addiction to power or is it perhaps the threat that when they leave power, they have to face the consequences of what they've done while in power? There's two things there. The first one is that, uh, you know, staying in, in, in office, in political office, is really the easiest, uh, you know, avenue to wealth accumulation. So these people are so, you know, used to having everything around them that it becomes very difficult for them to leave. But secondly, and unfortunately, most of our leaders, once they are in power, they actually erode any fiber of, you know, constitutional democracy in their countries mm. and once they you know start committing you know uh, human rights violations and their uh, related you know things it becomes difficult for them to then leave and the reason being they know once they leave office they are going to have to answer yeah uh, this is why they would rather die in office yeah mm. all right well let's let's now go back to Burundi um and I suppose the question to ask now is we, we see these elections coming up I mean it's 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 now it's it's happening this week in, in on Thursday, in fact, is that if I got my uh, dates 29 right? and, and 15 July for presidential. It's, okay, yes, so, it's, yes. uh, so it is coming up uh, mm. this month and July. Yes. Can we expect the ruling party to actually accept the results um, uh, if the opposition actually wins the, the majority votes in these parliamentary elections? Well, the, I doubt because 
the whole you know you know electoral process there you know can simply be described as a farce. I mean, there's no way opposition would win under the circumstances. Yeah. There's no uh, media. Uh, you know, the private media. So, you know, in terms of voter education, the information to the voters is almost you know, non-existent. Um, the security uh, forces have been mobilized also to basically deal with any dissenting voices. So, you know, I can safely say that in this election, President Nguruziza will be contesting against himself. Wow. So basically, be going into a non-election is what we're saying. We're it is pretending indeed. there's an election coming up, but it is whichever indeed. way it goes, and he this will remain president. is really running in the face of uh, the African Union efforts to try and stabilize the continent. Yeah. Uh, they had a meeting here in our city uh, last week, but you know, unfortunately, they don't seem to be fast enough to curb some of these uh, tendencies by uh, you know, the leaders in the you continent. You know, you, you you talk, and I mean, you you speak from a from a from an educated perspective in terms of what can happen. Now, we look back to, you know, what was happening here in South Africa. We had the AU summit taking place, all African heads of states here, all role players trying to get Africa into this, um, into this future that we dream of, um, which is free, it's fair, it's, it's better for their people. But, um, I mean, the, the reality is, is that what, what, what we're looking at now is that these elections that are coming up are not going to be free, they're not going to be fair, and there's no guarantee that there's not going to be a lot of lives left. What can the AU do about this, or are they going to do anything? It's, it's a catch-22 for the African Union. You know, I sometimes feel sorry for them because, you know, they could say we're staying away from these elections and therefore they won't have any, you know, credibility. But you also cannot leave Burundians on their own at the time of need. So you have to go there. And by going there, you're almost like uh, giving credence to the, you know, you know, faulty, you know, electoral process. So they have to go in there observe and sh hope that they can deter any you know commit you know committing of uh, you know violence against uh, ordinary citizens so they have to go in there they have to monitor the situation closely and uh, then see how they can assist the country post the polling day uh, in terms of reforms and ensuring that uh, constitutionalism returns to uh, Burundi. Yeah, let's leave it there for today. Thank you for talking to us. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, you. We'll continue to monitor these elections very, very closely here at the SABC, and perhaps you can come and visit us again once uh, all is said and done. That was uh, Dr. Victor Shale from, uh, is it is it Shale Stone or Shale Stone? Shale Stone. Shale Stone. Thank you very much. Shale Stone Elections and Governance Consultants talking to us about the upcoming Burundi elections. All right, turning our attention.